Hey guys, it's Randy with Lowbuck LS here again, and in this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to remove the fuel tank and fuel pump assembly from a Chevy Silverado. Uh, mine's a year 2000, and the reason you would want to do that is for me, I'm going to be installing that new uh, Walbro 525 Hellcat fuel pump, and the stock fuel pump is inside the fuel tank, so. That's what we got to do first is get that fuel tank and fuel pump assembly out of here so I'm going to show you guys how to do that this time around and I know it's been a while since I made a video it's been pretty busy with uh, kids being in school and two daughters in volleyball and one uh, son in hockey so like this weekend I've had one daughter in a volleyball tournament in one town uh, another daughter with a volleyball tournament in another city and a uh, son playing hockey in uh, in our town so it's been pretty hectic but uh, I'm still gonna try and uh, get some stuff done on this truck over the winter here so we'll start by getting that fuel tank out of here okay as you guys can see I've already got the truck up on jack stands here so basically first thing we got to do is uh, get the fuel tank out but before we do that I'm gonna move this stuff off the hood here and then we're going to relieve the pressure from the uh, fuel system like we did in the last video um, just because those lines coming from the fuel pump that's inside the tank will have pressure in them so I'll pop the hood here and we'll relieve that fuel pressure and now that I've got the hood popped I can see that I don't need to relieve the fuel pressure I think that might actually be a problem that uh, I'm hoping this uh, new fuel pump will keep will cure. But it shouldn't do that. Like um, your truck should uh, maintain fuel pressure for quite a while when you shut off the key. So that might. I'm hoping uh, changing this fuel pump will uh, solve that issue. Okay, so we're underneath the truck. Obviously, there's the fuel tank, and it's held in by these two straps. You can see. They just clip into this little uh, holder thing and there you can see that wiring from that sensor I installed in the last video. But uh, on the other side of these two straps there's bolts that hold the tank up or hold these straps in so we'll undo those. And uh, the other thing you want your fuel tank as empty as possible so I basically drove it until the needle on the fuel gauge was well below empty so let me grab the light here and we'll move to the other side of the tank and let's try and get the light position so we can see something and you can see right there if I get the light held right there's that bolt that's tucked up in beside the frame rail there we got to take that one out and then over at the back of the tank there's another one right there and that holds these let's zoom out a little bit here these straps that hold the fuel tank in so actually just looking in my uh, Haynes manual for this truck here there's a couple steps we got to do before we pull them there's a picture showing them uh, two straps that hold the tank in but before we do that we got to uh, remove the filler tube where uh, gas goes into the tank and then there's a ground strap and an evap canister as well and then we can uh, they suggest putting a jack under it so I could I do have that transmission jack adapter that I used when I pulled my transmission Maybe we'll use that to uh, lower the tank down. So, um, But anyways, before we uh, loosen those two straps off, we've got to uh, disconnect that filler tube. There's a ground strap and this evap canister that needs to come out. So there's the fuel filler door. I just took the cap off. And then there's those three screws around the fuel filler neck there that we have to take out. I think they look like about a eight millimeter screw or something like that. So we'll get those taken out now. And there you can see I've got those three screws out and I've got that filler neck just kind of pushed into the hole there so it will come away freely. So 
Now we'll hop back under the truck and have a look at that ground strap that needs to be removed and the EGR canister. Okay, there's the EVAP canister right there. And there's one bolt here and there's another one. I don't know, I'd have to move the light, but up bolts to the frame rail here with the bracket. So, but first you gotta disconnect the three hoses. So I got this one disconnected already, but to uh, pull it off there, you just gotta squeeze this plastic tab here and that releases, if you squeeze it right there, releases the little uh, plastic lips from that ridge on the, the hose barb there. So we'll get these other ones disconnected. And yeah, there's two little ones and then a big one up there. And then we'll get this EVAP canister out of here. All right, so I got that EVAP canister out and I didn't even have to take off that bracket that's bolted to the frame rail, it just kind of pulls out of there. Now we'll go over and look at this ground strap that uh, the manual says we need to disconnect. Okay, so here's the fuel filler neck. That's the truck bedside there. There's this ground strap that they're talking about and it just goes up and maneuver my light around here. You can see, um, it's a little hard to see, but basically there's, oh there you can see it better, there's a bolt we got to pull out that this braided ground strap connects to a tab on the frame here, so we'll get that out of there. Alright, so I got that ground strap disconnected, you can see it hanging down there, and I got my transmission jack. Uh, adapter put on my floor jack so I'm gonna roll that underneath the fuel tank here and we'll take off those straps and see if we can get get that lowered down enough to uh, disconnect the wiring and the hoses on the top of the tank so that's what we'll do now okay and I just wanted to show you guys one more thing before I uh, put this transmission jack under and pull the tank down uh, there's a couple fuel lines at the front of the fuel tank here that you got to disconnect and I'm dumping fuel on myself here But in order to do that you just got to push these two plastic tabs on and that releases the tabs from these uh, Slots in this uh, hose that connects onto this steel hose. So yeah, you just got to press these two tabs together like this and I used a needle nose pliers to hold those together like that and then you can pull this off of there and there's one more to do um let me readjust the light here right up there you can see there's one more so i'm going to pull it out of that black uh, holder thing there and same thing squeeze them two tabs together and i believe that one up there is the main uh, supply to the fuel rail and I think this one here is the return from the fuel rail. So we'll get that connection undone up there. And then we'll get our transmission jack under the tank and undo those two uh, straps around the tank and hopefully lower the tank down. Okay, there you can see I've got both of those fuel lines disconnected. They're both dripping fuel. So I'll have to do some cleanup here dripping a puddle on the floor but uh, so now that we've got those two fuel lines at the front of the fuel tank disconnected we'll go ahead and put our transmission jack under and release these two straps and get the tank lowered down and there you can see I've got my uh, transmission jack kind of supporting the tank so now we're gonna go under here and there's those two nuts up at the top there. I'm gonna undo those and get these straps out of here and use this jack to lower that tank down. All right, that was kind of a pain, but you can see I've got these straps. Uh, can't quite reach it here, but straps undone. Back one is uh, 
back there and it's undone as well and that was quite a pain um, the back one was fine because it's got this bolt and it threads out pretty easy but the front one has a nut on it and the bolt goes through a tab on the frame and it's not welded to the frame or anything so you've got to get a wrench up over the frame rail to keep this bolt from turning while you thread this nut off so that was a bit of a pain but we've got her now so now I should be able to uh, lower that gas tank down okay so we got the tank partially lowered on the transmission jack there so now we can see the top of it and we can disconnect this uh, wiring for the fuel pump and then we'll also take these straps out of here that hold the tank there's just turn the light a little bit here okay it's not gonna stay where I want it to but there's the front one we'll pull that one out too and then like I said we'll uh, turn the light again here basically I'll unplug that connector up top there um, this one was the fuel pressure sensor but I used that wiring in the last video for uh, wiring in a fuel pressure sensor up under the hood instead of in the fuel tank so yeah like I said we'll disconnect that connector there and then we should be able to drop this tank out of here all right as you can see the fuel tank is out and even that was a bit of a pain because my uh, transmission jack didn't go down low enough so I kind of had to lower it part way down with the jack and then uh, kind of wrestle it off the jack and then this filler neck I guess I could have uh, disconnected it there's a hose clamp there but it kind of goes over the frame rail so I kind of had to uh, wrestle that filler neck hose out from above the frame rail but she's out now as you can see and uh, so now fuel pump is going to be uh, underneath this ring here so I'm going to clean some of this dirt away from uh, here and then disconnect these hoses and it's the same deal there's these two plastic tabs on the return and the main supply line and then on this vent line you just got to squeeze the two actually we might be able to do that right no can't do it while I'm holding my phone to record and then to uh, there's like a lock ring that holds this whole pump and uh, level sender assembly in so there's a little tab right there we just have to get that tab released past that little notch right there and then I'll just take a screwdriver and a hammer and basically we got to twist this whole ring that way to release it from those tab dealies there so that's what we'll do now get these hoses disconnected make sure this tabs out of the way and twist this out and we should be able to pull that whole assembly out of there okay so as usual things uh, kind of got sideways on me here so I got the return line disconnected and the vent line disconnected and I guess I got a little too rammy with the uh, main line and you can see I broke this plastic hose barb off it should look like these other two here but instead that plastic piece is still inside that connector here so unfortunately I think that means I've got to replace this whole assembly so we will uh, go ahead and get that out of there and then I'm either gonna have to go to a junkyard pull one of these which is probably not worth it because I'd have to pull a tank out of a truck in the junkyard or pick and pull so I'll probably just go on Amazon or Rock Auto or I don't know if Summit Racing carries those but I'm gonna have to order up a new one of those anyways okay guys and there is that assembly out of there you can see it's got this uh, that's your fuel level sender it kind of works on a potentiometer type deal there that uh, tells the computer how much fuel is in your tank and those two wires right there go to the factory fuel pump which is in this 
bucket here. There's your fuel filter that the uh, fuel pump uh, sucks fuel through. And there you can see that thing I busted, that broken uh, hose barb right there. So, Okay guys, I think I'm actually going to wrap this one up. Uh, otherwise it's going to turn into a real long video. So we'll just call this the uh, removing the fuel tank and fuel pump video. And then when I get a new one of those uh, sending unit fuel pump bucket in tank assemblies, We'll uh, go ahead with part two of this video, which will be installing the Walbro Hellcat 525 fuel pump. So we're going to wrap this one up for now. I know it's been a while since I've made a video, so thanks for uh, putting up with me. And uh, we'll uh, get back to you on the next one where we uh, put everything back together here. So that's all for now. We'll talk to you on the next one. Bye for now.